Plastic Channel. Today we're going to check out a quick lesson on a mid-segment of a triangle. If you'd like to go down to the description for a link to some guided notes, you can print those out, follow along with me as we go. So a mid-segment of a triangle. So let's say, I've got a triangle, call it triangle ABC. A mid-segment, a mid-segment is a segment that connects the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. So let's say we have one side of the triangle AB. The midpoint of that segment is somewhere around there. We'll call that D. And then another side of the triangle we'll call BC here. And the midpoint of that segment is somewhere around there. And we'll call that point E. So the mid segment is the segment that connects those two points, those two midpoints together right there. So that green line right there, that segment, that is called the mid-segment. Now there's a neat little theorem that relates a mid-segment to the other sides of the triangle, but before I give away that theorem, I want to kind of play around with this figure and see what we can glean from what we have. Now if you remember a midpoint, obviously a midpoint is a point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. So if we look at that, we've got this side, side segment AB, has been cut into two congruent segments, BD and DA, will both have to be the same length. That's what a midpoint does. Okay, on the other side, it happens the same way. BE, this segment here, and EC will also be congruent to one another. Okay, now really what we have here is we have two triangles. We have the small triangle BDE up top. We have this big triangle BAC right here, um, the whole thing. Now these two triangles, if we um, kind of investigate what we have, we've got uh, a pair of sides, each one, here and here with this big one. And knowing that this segment, DB, and this segment, DA, are the same, what I really know is that this segment, DB, which if I call X, and then the length of the side of the bigger triangle, AB, this whole thing is really just 2X because both of these are x, this whole thing would be 2x. And if I do the same thing on the other side, if I call BE y, I don't really know what it is, this being y and EC being y would cause BC to be 2y. Okay. Third thing we see here is that this uh, angle up top, angle B, both triangles, the small triangle and the larger triangle, both triangles share that angle. Okay, so if we were to like separate these two triangles, if I had the small one over here and the big one as a whole, both triangles would have angle B as its top angle. Now, if you've done any work with um, triangle similarity or even triangle congruence, you probably recognize uh, the term side angle side. So what we have here is um, really a side angle side similarity postulate where I have two triangles where they share an angle or one angle is congruent to another angle in a triangle, and the two sides that surround that angle are proportional to one another. Okay, so for triangles to be similar, you have to have congruent corresponding angles and proportional sides, but you have these shortcuts, one of them being side angle side, where we have one side proportional to another side of a triangle. Proportional meaning they um, they are a multiple of each other or, difference by, or differ by a scale factor. In this case, this segment is half the length of this segment, or this segment is double the length of this segment. And the same thing on the other side, where we have y and 2y. So they differ by a scale factor of 2. So I have side angle side. These two triangles are similar to one another. Now, even though I don't have anything written down for the third side down here at the bottom, once I say that these two triangles are similar, I know that all their sides are proportional, all their angles um, that correspond are the same. So I really know that this segment down here, the segment DE, which is that mid-segment, and this segment here, I'm going to call this one Z, and this segment down here would have to be 2Z. Okay, it's double, just like the other two sides. Um, we have double. So mid-segment, you can see, is just half the length of the third side of that triangle. Now there's one more little property here that we're going to notice. And this comes from um, some rules that you've likely learned a while back. Let's say we extend out 
these sides a little bit. Okay, these two sides, the bottom sides. What we have is a situation where we have a set of lines that are cut by a transversal. Okay, if you remember parallel lines cut by transversals, you probably did a section on that. Um, there's a little property that relates these angles together. There's a postulate. Um, if you remember what these are called, these are called corresponding angles. Whenever two lines are cut by a transversal, they create a bunch of different angles, one of which are called corresponding angles. And if you remember, corresponding angles that are congruent, which I know they're congruent because again, these two triangles are similar, the small triangle and big triangle, so their corresponding angles are congruent. If corresponding angles are congruent, what does that tell you about the two lines here? If you remember, it tells you that they are parallel. Okay, this is the converse of the corresponding angles postulate, if you remember that one. So DE and AC, those two segments are parallel to one another because those corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, so in this situation, we have two properties that kind of make up um, what we call the triangle mid-segment theorem. So the triangle mid-segment theorem triangle mid-segment theorem says that the segment that joins the midpoints of two sides of a triangle, namely the mid-segment, that segment is parallel to the third side of the triangle and will also be half of its length. Okay, so this is true for all mid-segments of any triangle. The mid-segment is always going to be parallel to the third side and will always be half the length of the third side. Okay, so we have this neat little theorem. Let's see what we can do with it. And the example that we're going to do today um, is going to be kind of an indirect measurement type of an example. So let's say that we have uh, a pond or a lake. And we're trying to figure out uh, a distance across the pond at a certain point. Maybe we're building a bridge or a dam or something and we're trying to figure out the distance. But maybe we don't have a boat, we don't have any way to get across um, the lake. So we have to measure indirectly. One way to do that is to create a triangle around that lake. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a triangle here. Close enough. So I've got a triangle around the lake. And let's say that our bridge or our dam is gonna be from this point here to this point here. Okay, so kind of where the, the lake is tangent to those sides of the triangle. Now pretend with me for a minute that this point is the midpoint of this segment, and this point is the midpoint of this segment. So we have a situation here where we can use this triangle mid-segment theorem to figure out this distance. So this is the distance that I'm looking for. I wanna know what is the distance across that lake. And since we can measure distances around the lake, we don't have to go across the lake to measure those distances. Um, we're gonna get some numbers in here. So again, we know that a midpoint divides a segment in half, so these two segments are the same. These two segments are the same. And let's say you've got your tape measure or some kind of measuring tool. We'll make the numbers easy here. So let's say you got 600 feet from here, which also means this is 600 feet. That is the midpoint. And these two sides are the same. I don't really need those sides. Let's say that this segment over here is 800 feet. Now, you're gonna see that this doesn't take much computation to figure out what is the length of this mid-segment here based on that triangle mid-segment theorem. It says that if you have a mid-segment, it's gonna be parallel to the third side and it's gonna be half the length of that third side. Well, it's half of 800. 400 feet. So the distance across that lake or that pond, you're gonna build your bridge 400 feet across. That's it, that's the story on mid-segments of a triangle. So be sure to click the thumbs up if this video was helpful for you. It's a quick and easy way to let YouTube know that you appreciated it. And of course, if you subscribe to the channel, you will see more of these hands doing some math. So uh, if you'd like to see more of that, click on the subscribe button. Thanks for watching the Geomestic channel, see you next time.